Hello, this is Michael Fackrell here. Today I'd like to speak about one of the commands of the Lord Jesus Christ through the Apostle Paul. Paul, as you know, in Ephesians chapter 6, tells believers to take up the whole armor of God. All right, the whole armor of God. That means that you've got to take every piece of the armor. It's not like you can take some pieces and not others and then you've done the commandment. No, everything in the armor of God has to be taken up. So one of the things that we must take up is in Ephesians 6.15, it says that we must take up the shoes of the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now, I want to look with you at what that actually means. Different translations say a few different things. I'll use a few that I think are helpful. The King James Bible says, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And then the contemporary English version says, your desire to tell the good news about peace should be like shoes on your feet. Now, obviously, if you don't have shoes on, you're not going anywhere. And this is where many Christians find themselves today, stuck for years, hardly moving at all because it hurts too much to move. They don't have the shoes on. And because they don't have the shoes on, they're not going anywhere. They're not doing anything. They're not advancing the kingdom of God like God wants it to be advanced. The kingdom of God will advance as the gospel is proclaimed. And this is something for every believer. And I'm going to show that to you. So just hold on a second. I know some of you are thinking, oh, I don't have the gift of evangelism. Let's look at that in a second. It says in the Good News Translation, and as your shoes, the readiness to announce the good news of peace. Uh, and uh, there are other versions of the Bible. They all want to say something slightly different. Put on your shoes so that you are ready to spread the good news that gives peace. Okay, are you ready to share the good news that gives peace? This is a commandment of the Lord. And one of the reasons why very few Christians today are making disciples and very few Christians are sharing the gospel is because people simply aren't ready to do it. You have to be ready in a number of different ways. You need to know what the gospel is. That's one thing. Okay, so the gospel is about returning to God through Jesus Christ, through his death and resurrection. When you turn to God, because of Jesus' death and resurrection, you can come back into fellowship with God. That's what the gospel is all about. And it has a lot of consequences, which are wonderful. And you can spend years unfollowing them and discussing them. But we want to get back to the core basics. We want to understand what it is we're communicating. So you do need to know what the gospel is. And I've just given it to you. You can read this also in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. You can read the four gospels and get a fuller understanding of what the gospel of the kingdom is all about which is part of the good news. Gospel means good news. Okay, so how do we fulfill this command of the Lord? We need to prepare. We need to prepare ourselves mentally, so we need to know what the message is. We need to prepare ourselves physically so that we're strong enough to, uh, to do it, or if we're really weak, at least we can get on the phone. So we need to make certain preparations and get on the internet and share the gospel. We need to share it in different ways, but we need to be prepared with a physical plan. How are we going to actually do this? All right, so you might decide that you want to talk with your family. Well, you need to make a plan. How are you going to do it? You need to know what you're going to say, how you're going to do it, where you're going to do it, what you're going to do, how you're going to start the conversation. These are all things. You need to be spiritually prepared as well. You need to be in peace yourself. Now, to have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ, you actually do need to repent. You need to turn to God fully because while there's a quarrel going on with you and God about something and you're disobeying in some area, you know that it's niggling at you. You don't really have peace. If you don't have peace yourself, you can't transmit peace. So God wants us to be in peace with the Lord, to be in peace within ourselves and to make preparations to that effect. So there's spiritual preparations as well. Yes, we need the peace which passes understanding. We need to connect with the Lord so that His Spirit fills us and we have peace. So that when we transmit words, we're transmitting peace as well. And I've had people say this to me in the schools. They said, there's just such a peace about you. The children respond to you so well. 
even though I'm quite firm, there's a lot of peace that's normally in my life. And that's part of the preparation of the gospel of peace. So we need to be in peace so we can transmit peace. Peace is our message, peace with God. We need to be models of it. We need to be communicating it. It's a spiritual thing that actually people feel and people observe and people see. So the gospel of peace, it's about how we can come into peace through the Lord Jesus Christ. And I urge you to study this. Now, listen, I will help anybody at this stage. I've still got time to help people get started if they want to share the gospel with others. All right. If you want encouragement, if you want help, I've still got time and space in my calendar to help a few people, a few more. Uh, it's something that we need help with. I only got started in it because somebody else took me along doing it with them. And most people are like that. Most of us are like that. Maybe only one in a hundred will hear the gospel and immediately start sharing it with everybody. Uh, and we say, oh, they've got the gift of evangelism. So what is this gift of evangelism anyway? Uh, there's no such gift in 1 Corinthians 12. It talks about many gifts and you'd think the gift of evangelism would be one of them if it was such an important gift. And if God wanted to emphasize the idea that not everybody should share the gospel, then he surely would have put in 1 Corinthians 12 where it talks about different parts, different members, that there's this gift of evangelism that some have and as the Spirit wants, some don't have. But that's not what we find in the Bible. There's no gift of evangelism in 1 Corinthians 12. There is the office of an evangelist in, one, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. Uh, a very despised office, I would have to say. Everyone wants to be a prophet, an apostle, pastor, something today. No one really, I won't say nobody, but very few people would glory in the fact that they were, are an evangelist. Because really an evangelist is a humble job. And uh, yes, you could get your name up in lights, I suppose. Um, there are a few like that, that uh, attract huge crowds and speak to masses of people from time to time. But Generally, an evangelist is someone who not only shares the gospel effectively and regularly, but trains others in how to share the gospel. So that is a specialized job. Not everybody is called to be an evangelist, but everyone's supposed to do the work of an evangelist to some extent, especially apostles. Uh, Timothy was an apostle and Paul told him, you must do the work of an evangelist. So if you're someone who believes you're an apostle and you put apostle on your name, make sure you're doing the work of an evangelist, all right? Make sure that you're sharing the gospel. I was told even that a lot of public speaking evangelists don't even share the gospel privately with others, and that's not acceptable. We need to model what it is that we're looking for people to do. So this is really a call to obedience. This is a call to return to the Lord in one aspect, which is to put on the shoes of the preparation of the gospel of peace. We are actually supposed to be prepared. And if you don't have anything on your shoes, just think about it naturally. You will not go far. It'll hurt too much. And people are saying, well, if I was to share the gospel, it would hurt. They're thinking about how painful it would be. Maybe they're thinking it will be embarrassing. What if I'm rejected? Well, rejection is just inevitable. Uh, we're going to get it from time to time from people. But we're not actually called to major on talking with people who are not hungry for the message. You can do things in such a way that the people who are not interested, you just bless them and move on. And really, that's what we need to be doing. Because don't waste your time arguing with proud people who don't have any hunger for God. Find the person that's probably not very far away from them who actually is hungry and actually does want to receive the gospel and does actually hunger for a relationship with God and internal peace and the things that God can provide through Jesus Christ. So there are a lot of people that will value this gospel, but you have to find them. And you also need to be prepared to know what to say. Now, listen, there's a great tool called The Three Circles. You can look it up on YouTube. It's a wonderful tool. You can share the gospel powerfully and without compromise in three minutes with somebody. And even my daughters can do it. My young daughters, one is a teenager, one's nine years of age at the present time. They can share the gospel with the three circles and they're starting to do it. You can easily do this. There's other tools like a 15 second testimony where you say something like this. There was a time in my life when I was miserable and selfish but after I started following Jesus, I found peace and purpose to my life. Do you have a story like that? See how I gave that in 15 seconds or less? 
You can do that. There'll be two words that describe your life before and two words afterwards. You can construct a testimony to fit in 15 seconds and challenge people. You can use these kind of tools to get started and they're powerful. Don't despise tools that other people are using. God can give you your own ones, but use ones that work at first. If you're not doing things for the Lord like that you should be, like sharing the gospel, get prepared mentally. Have a plan, have a strategy. Think about how you would start the conversation. There are different ways to start, so many different ways. And perhaps I'll make another video talking about different ways to turn the conversation around to the Lord. We need to speak up. We need to break the silence and we need to talk about Jesus. We are getting close to the end of the age and right now the army of God needs to rise up, not only in prayer, not only in you know making declarations about moral issues on Facebook or something like this. We need to share the gospel that can save people. And Jesus paid a tremendous price to provide a gospel. Let's not waste it. And remember, if you value the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for your sins, that same blood was shed for everybody around you in this ocean of people that we live in that are perishing because we're not speaking up and we're not praying like God wants us to. So let's turn all the way back to Jesus. Let's turn our hearts 100% towards Him, towards doing His will. Let's be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let's cry out to God and let's open our mouth in sensitive ways, in ways that work, actually sharing the gospel, actually sharing the message. And I'd love to dismantle all the thousand and one excuses that Satan has planted in the minds of Christians, but I won't be able to do it all on this video. If you want to get prepared, if you want to obey Jesus, and if you need help, reach out to me, post a comment, look up the three circles on YouTube, and you will find out at least one great way to share the gospel that has been used successfully by thousands of people. Well, God bless you. I hope you'll like this video. I hope you'll share it with others and subscribe so you'll get more videos like this. God bless you.